thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, man, thank you. It's my pleasure, man. I'm excited to talk to you. And I think you reached out to me a couple of times, and I'm sorry that I never, I never got back to you. I was going through a lot of things in my head. I still wanted to keep myself, you know, and you know, and, and the down low. But I think it's time for me to actually now talk about a lot of things that, you know, have gone in my career. And I'm just excited for the future, brother. Well, look, there's no better time to do this interview than right now. So thank you for coming on. I'm very curious. When you wear a mask, how do you pick out your mask? You know, I pick out a T-shirt every day, but how do you pick <laughs> out which mask you're going to wear? Well, the, the the idea of me is always like I try to always combine like my shirt with my mask or if I go out to an event, the, the things that I wear have to combine because that's I don't know if, if I don't know how they call that condition because I'm always like everything has to be in order. Oh, like everything. OCD? I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you have to have like that. And, and I've always been like that. Everything that I've done. I remember. Let me tell you a story. And I, I just remember uh, we, were in, we were in Macon, Georgia. I think one time we had a show. Uh, it was, I was traveling with El Rio and we got to the locker room. And I remember that I, I got to the locker room and I put I took he left. I don't know where he went. And he had his bag there. He always had like a bunch of mess in his bag. And I remember I put it I put everything in order in the locker room. Da, da, da. And then he comes back and he's like, "Where's my stuff?" I'm like, "It's right here, hold your order." <laughs> he's like, "I'm not gonna find anything because I'm because everything that I had in my bag, I know how it is." I, but I've always been like that. Like everything has to be in order, and and in my house, I know where my mask are at. Like the things that I have, if somebody grabs something, I know who grabbed it. Like I've always had that. That so so when I pick out a mask, it has to combine with the things that I usually wear because. In my head, I'm thinking like, oh, it doesn't look good or it doesn't combine. And but but I like that, you know. I like to be able to always, you know, be in um, in control in that sense. <laughs> you know, it's a little embarrassing for me to admit this, but since I don't speak a lot of Spanish, I didn't know that Sincar actually meant something. I don't know that everybody who speaks English realizes mm. that this actually, you know, means it's faceless, right? Yeah, exactly. Sin cara means face. That's that's where the the mask comes in, like that in in the in the in the rule where they they cover your it covers everything, you know, the eyes, the mouth, everything. And uh, now with the pandemic, it's funny because uh, people were always like, always say, "How can you wrestle with a mask that covers your mouth?" I'm like, "How can you walk with a with a face mask now?" And, and people complain about it now because they have to wear this 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 little face mask on their face. Imagine me working with this thing for a. Uh, 10 years or more. <laughs> yeah. Is it easier or that much more difficult to wrestle with or without a mask? Well, a lot of the guys, a lot of my, a lot of the boys would always tell me like, how can you wrestle with that thing on? It's, yeah. I feel like my face is going to explode because it's, everything's inside. It, you don't get like, what is it called? Claustrophobic or whatever. Sure. I'm like, no, I, I'm already used to that. And, and it's funny, like where I wear, where I wear a mask like this, that I got to talk, I feel like I'm naked. It's funny. I don't know why. But I, I guess I used to always cover my face, my eyes, everything. But but it's but then it's harder for me to talk in that mask because I'm like something on my on my mouth. But no, I, I just got used to it and wearing it, and, and it becomes part of you. It becomes a part of who you are. And and for me, wearing a mask has always been, you know, my essence, who I am, my culture, what I've done in my life. And and when when I don't when I don't have it, the time that I was wrestling for for a couple of years as as Unico, that was great. I enjoyed it a lot. It was fun, but I felt it was me. You know, I felt mm. something was missing, and and it was the mask. And, and now that I, you know, wore the mask for many years now, again, it's just been fun to be able to go to different places and, and wearing a mask, and and people not knowing who you really are because now I can have a regular life. Imagine some of the guys that are re re really well known, like yeah. when they go out to me, when they go out to other places, it's hard for them to actually, you know, hide. Like if you, if you see Orton in the in the street, you know, it's him. Even if you go up to me, he's not going to say no. He's like, no, I'm not Randy Orton. Like it's him, you know? <laughs> and for me, uh, in that sense, it's a lot easier. Obviously I have to choose him. Sometimes people maybe very, very recognize me, but they're yeah. very, you know, very polite. Nobody comes up to me or takes pictures of me or nothing. They just sometimes go up to me and like very like timid. Hey, can I ask you a question? Like, <laughs> are, are you this guy? I'm like, yeah. And I would say, yeah, that's me. I say, oh, thank you, man. And this and that. And, and, and then they're like, can I take a picture? I'm like, well, I would take it, but my face is not going to be, you know, it's not going to sound the same as if I wear a mask, you know, in the picture. And they understand. Well, but, you see Rey Mysterio in photos sometimes doing something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't, I don't like doing that. I don't like being like, like that, that kind of like that. I think the mask always is, is something better for the people. And when, especially when fans ask you for, for a picture, they actually want you with a mask. And, and what I've done, it's uh, what everywhere I go, everywhere I travel, 
I always keep a mask on and then either in my car or in my bag, in my, in my backpack for that, for that, you know, for those moments, if people ask me and I'm able to do it, I'll do it. You know, that's, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You said it, you know, feels like you wearing a mask. Did it feel like you when you were taking on this gimmick that had already been portrayed by somebody else when you were Sin Cara? Mm. Did you, what did you ask me, Quinn? The question? Did it feel like you were being you when you were playing the character oh, okay. that had already been played by somebody else? Yeah, because I, I, uh, I changed a lot of things over the character. I wasn't trying to wrestle like he was wrestling. You know, I was, I was doing my own thing. I was putting my, my persona into this new chapter of Sin Cara. And it was, it was crazy, man. When, when I got the call to tell me, hey, you're gonna, you want to be, you want to continue Sin Cara? I was like, I, I was like dreaming. Because I don't know if you know the story about the the both of us in Mexico. I, I debuted in uh, November 21st of 1999 as Mystico in Mexico, in Ciudad Juarez. And then all of a sudden, like two years later, I never I never did it, never registered the name because I didn't know that you had to register the name, go through all that legal stuff. So then, so then the company in Mexico, Consejo, ended up registering the name Mystico. And my my lifestyle, they made it into a gimmick. Back in back in during those times, I was studying theology. I was, you know, doing missionary trips in Mexico. I used to get on the buses and preach. I used to get on the streets and knock on doors and doing all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, so something that was my lifestyle, they made it into this gimmick for this for this guy for for Nacho. And it was tough, you know, because when and when uh, when everything happened, it was I think it was two thousand five. In 2004, I became a world champion against uh, psychosis, against Nicho and Ciudad Juarez. I took away the WWE uh, middleweight title. And then all of a sudden, this kid comes in and saying, then Consejo starts announcing that, you know, this amazing star is coming up. And they say, Mystico. So a lot of the boys thought that it was me. And they would come to Juarez. They would tell me, hey, so you're going to go to Mexico City? I'm like, what are you talking about? And then, and then all, all this happened. He, he became an amazing, you know, star in Mexico. They, he, the, or, or, it was just crazy. And then when he came down to WWE, I got hired first. Uh, and I was wrestling in FCW. And then a year later, he gets hired. And I'm like, <laughs> man, like, what's going on? And then I'll, they, they, they do this big press conference in Mexico and announcing him. You know, as Cara, and then he comes to the states, and he didn't even he didn't even go to uh, the school. He went straight to uh, to television. So then he came down for a couple of times. I remember the Dr. Tom Pritchard, where, uh, which I love very much. He's he's an awesome trainer, an awesome person. He told me. I remember he. I had a meeting with him. He's like, he's like, I understand if you don't want to work with him, you know, because I told him the story. He was like, no. I was like, him, like, I'm not. I have no grudge on nobody. You know, I'm here to work. I'm do to do the best that I can. And, and if I get to work with him, then so be it. You know, mm -hmm. I love wrestling. This is what, this is where I'm here for. So let's do it. So he came down for a couple of times. We trained a couple of times and then he went off on the road, you know, as he got out, then he got uh, suspended for, uh, I don't know what he came out, what substance he came out positive for. And then that's when they actually put me in to, uh, to be Sin Cara for in the beginning. That was before I got that the tattoo in my hand. I didn't, I didn't have the wings or, or none like this. And uh, I was portraying Sin Cara for a little bit. And then we ended up doing the few where he ended up, you know, be, staying with the name. I ended up becoming Unico for a while. So it was just, it was just a lot, a lot of craziness. But when I got the call and they told me that, I was in shock, man. I was like, man, mm -hmm. like, like I couldn't believe it because uh, during that time when, when they stole my name in Mexico, uh, El Santo asked me one time, you should fight for the name and do all this stuff. And I told him, this is what I told him. And he even wrote a story about it. I told him, you know what? I have the best lawyer. And my lawyer is God. If something belongs to me, one day I'll get it. And if not, mm -hmm. it's not for me. And then when that happened, I was like, man, this is insane. Like God works in mysterious ways, you know, I'm a man of faith. So, so for me, you know, when, when that happened, I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe it, but it was also a lot of happiness. So what, so what I did with Sincara, I was just me. I ended up changing a lot of, a lot of the things in the outfit. If you remember, I had a cross in the middle of my, on my, uh, on my, on my pants, yeah. I ended up changing the design completely for what you know what what they had for him, and 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 they just I just made it mine, I just made it mine, and and I and I never lied to people, I never told them that it was him. I told I told people it's me, it's my time now. He didn't he didn't you know cut out to be of what they wanted out of him. Why why not me now? And and that's how I always had that mentality. But it was tough. Let me tell you why, because imagine having this this kid coming from Mexico 
trying to make him a, a big star. And then especially during that time when uh, Hunter was trying to show uh, the boss that he could take over the company. Right. That was before NXT. And then he he hires Big Con, remember? And then she she had to leave the company. I don't know why the reasons. And then this kid, and then this is the, the biggest signing that he had. But Mexico comes in and he doesn't do anything. So in the eyes, I think of Vince, it was harder for, for Hunter to think like, oh man, like I failed twice now, you know? And then the decision for the name of Sincara, of what I know, it was made by, by Vince to give me the name. So I think I never got that opportunity or that support of, from from Hunter because he it wasn't his project anymore. Mm. And if I succeeded, then it was a big bigger failure for him because he was the one that brought this kid from Mexico over to make him a big star. So do you feel like that affected a push that you might have had? Oh yeah, big time, big time, big time. Because I was I wasn't getting that that you know inside support when they had those meetings when they had you know trying to get people people over in that sense you know it wasn't about you know about that anymore because you know i remember when uh when when nacho was portraying sincara uh he would always get opportunities all the time all the time all the time even if the match wasn't good or something happened or he said that he was hurt that he couldn't wrestle the next week he was in the pay-per-view he was doing this doing that and with me it wasn't like that you know it was always like i would i felt like i always always had to do more than than you should to show them that I really you know that I belong there and and that was tough that was tough because you know I was there every week I never I never failed you know whatever they asked me to do I did it even even if I didn't improve I did it because I love my job I love wrestling I love what I did and and I understood you know it was part of what we had to do but then it became like a trend all the time all the time seeing cut out every time every time I would go other people knew that I was gonna lose mm. Yeah. It didn't help the talent that I was working with because they, uh, I used to, I remember a few times where I go out, I wrestled some more Joe. People already knew that he was going to kick my butt. <laughs> and it was just tough because I don't know if, if you know a little about my background. You know, I was a, I was a high school wrestler. I wrestled in college, you know, I'm, I'm not a, excuse the word, I'm not a wimp. Yeah. I can defend myself. And it was just tough to be able to, you know, see some of the guys, you know, had that, 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 uh, that chance to succeed in. And me just being, you know, in the back, just sitting down and watching all these guys coming up and getting that opportunity coming up. And then me just sitting down there and not doing anything. But with that said, 10 years in WWE, what are you most proud of during that time? Well, I got to travel the world. I got to meet a lot of amazing people. And and, and I think that's the, the memory is nobody can take him away. When I was in the ring, nobody could take away my talent. Down there, they could write whatever they wanted and the politics, whatever. But when you're in that ring, it's just you and the people. Mm. And that that they can never take that away from me. And I think for me, that was that was the main thing. I got to to do amazing, uh, get to meet a lot of amazing people, travel the world, you know, get to know a lot of a lot of people throughout, you know, my life and, and everything that I, that I accomplished. But obviously, it took a lot of work too. It took a lot of time because I was out of my house for many years, and and my, I missed a lot of things of, of my kids. But I think the most thing you know that that I'm most proud of is the memories that I made, the friends that I made, and, and the relationship that I built throughout my career. You know, obviously, I'm not a perfect person, but I, I, you talk to a lot of the people. They're gonna say like I'm, I'm I'm very loyal. I'm a loyal guy. If you're my friend, you're my friend for life. Yeah. And if not, I can't be I can't be like in that in like like if I don't like you, I don't like you. Simple as that. <laughs> and I and if I get it back, I understand. You know. Is there a <laughs> match or a, is there a match or a storyline that you're particularly proud of? Well, I got to work with Andrade when he first came up, and let me tell you why I, I'm very proud of being able to work with Andrade is yeah. because I met him when he was 14 years old. Wow. I got to go to uh, wrestle in Gomez Palacio. That's where my dad's from also. And that's where he's from. So I went over there. I remember uh, we were in a hotel room with a friend of mine at Covarde Jr. And then he comes in, this kid comes in, like little skinny kid, like, hey, how are you doing? And, this and, that. and then he tells uh, my friend, uh, uh, Covarde Jr., he tells, hey, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go to Mexico City, see if I make it, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to go next year when I, when I turn 15. I was like, what? So he left when he was a little kid, 15-year-old kid. And then he became this, you know, this legend over there, La Sombra. And then all of a sudden, like, he became this big star. I got to work with him in one tournament many years ago in Latin Mexico. The only time that I wrestled there many years ago as Incognito. And uh, it was just, you know, it was great. And then we came, we came to the company and he was down in NXT. And then when they called him up to do the tour, he, I got to work with him. We had never worked before. 
mm. and I got to work with him his first tour in, in in WWE and it was just fun because he was he was a he was my friend my friend and also at the same time we became enemies you know it was one of those those big rivalries and and usually when you work with somebody that you know you usually tend to hit a little harder <laughs> because because you have more confidence in what you guys are doing together and, and I just had you know amazing amazing uh chemistry with him and in, in the matches that we had and and it was fun to be able to you know watch him you know grow as as as, as a wrestler and as a person and now who he became later on and and it was just fun to be able to you know help him in that sense to you know I guess show him the ropes and in, in, in WWE because it was different from working down in Mexico yeah. So at the end of 2019, you asked for your release, you were granted your release. What was the thought process going into this? What was the plan after you got released? Well, let me tell you first a little bit. Uh, I I put out my release November 11th yeah. of 2019. We were yeah. in Vienna, Austria. <laughs> in the middle of a wrestling tour, a European tour. And, uh, and the thought process wasn't because I wanted to, uh, it wasn't one thing that I decided one day and I'm leaving. That's it. You know that week or whatever it took me a few years to actually you know uh digest everything and put everything in thought and and if i really wanted to take that decision and uh, it was tough because me being a young kid from el paso from juarez and having this amazing dream of working for the biggest company and then and then when the time comes when you don't want to be there anymore it's like how how, how did i get from there to yeah. here now you know and in the in that thought process and in my heart yeah. And it was tough to realize that you know that they didn't they didn't really care about me anymore that that, that I wasn't you know in, in in that uh in that I guess line of people that they really wanted to help to to accomplish a lot of things in the company and and I remember thinking like and calling a few of my friends and praying and and saying is this the right decision for my life for my career for what I want to do and and everybody everybody pointed out to the same thing you know like it's not about the money it's about being happy it's about you know doing things in your life that you really you know are going to feel you know that you're achieving things in your life and I remember a story one time and, and it really broke my heart because I don't want to get emotional but I I came in and um and I had a match and then my daughter, she was like, dad, uh, how come you always lose? Mm. And that was tough, man. I didn't know what to say to her. It was actually like, I, I didn't know what to say to her. I was like, I was like, oh, no, no, no. I, I remember I was like, oh, don't worry about it. It's, it's just my job, baby. Like I get paid the same. I said something like that. I, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. It was really tough to be able to tell your kids, you know, that, that it's the business that is not actually, you know, because of who we am if if he was actually because of this then it's different <laughs> but but it's entertainment i understand it but it was it was tough and then so when i took the decision i was completely completely uh done i say i'm i don't want to be here anymore yeah i'm done with this i'm done with the other uh, politics you know it's not about telling anymore it's not about you know having a great body none like that because they give a bunch of excuses oh you gotta get in shape look at calisto he's in shape what has he done nothing Fortunately, you know, so it's just a lot of things. And and when I actually took the decision, I was I was completely, completely just like done and say, okay, it's time for me to to actually put out my feelings out there. Cause I, I've always been a very private person in that sense. If you look at my social media, the things that I put out there, I never talk about my my personal life because yeah. it's tough. And I don't want people to know everything about me because that's my personal life. But then again, like in this in this world nowadays, it's tough because sometimes people start judging you for the things that you do or maybe, oh, he thinks he's better than this guy. That's why he asked for his release or he, look at his ego or this and that. It's not about ego. They say your ego is not your amigo. Mm, so, so That's so a good like, t-shirt. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So imagine imagine that. So it wasn't about that. It was it was just that that I wasn't getting, you know, the opportunities that I thought I deserved. Obviously, people think differently, but but I think I was there for a lot of years, and and I helped a lot of the guys, and and I had nothing against that. You know, I've always been a team player, whatever they asked me to do. But it was time for me to actually, you know, leave. And I I wasn't, you know, I didn't want a whole pie, but I wanted a piece of the pie. That's sure. how I said, you know. And and it was tough to be able to realize that nothing was going to happen. And, and when I took the decision, I was happy with it. I was happy with it. And I obviously they didn't like it because I posted it on social media because I did a press release in Mexico, but I had to because they were not listening to me. I went to talk to a lot of people. Everybody would throw the ball here and there and nothing would never really happen. So for me, I'm just talking about me. You know, it, it was the best decision for me to be able to, you know, let them know how I felt. 
So what was the plan after that? I mean, obviously then you had, you could do whatever you wanted and then mm-hmm. a worldwide pandemic hits with COVID. <laughs> well, I already had a lot of dates set up. You had to go to different places and work here, work there. And, and then everything stopped like a week later after I got my release. And it was, it was just like, what am I going to do now? Like, this is my limit. This is what I do for a living. I'm not getting a, a check anymore every week like I used to. Yeah. So I had to, you know, start thinking about, about other sources of income, you know. And I started working with a company here, a sort of company here in El Paso, promoting them. And then uh, I started uh, working with my brother at a construction company that we built together also. And then a lot of few different things. And then... Oh, so I was just trying to do other things, but you know, throughout this whole process of like, like you're saying, like what, what was next for me? Yeah. I thought that I could never survive outside of WWE. That's the thought process when you're there. Like, am I going to be able to survive? Am I going to be able to do this and that? Because obviously, you know, having that, um, that security income, it's, it's, it's a blessing. But then again, like when that, that doesn't make you happy anymore, you're not enjoying it, then 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 all that doesn't mean anything. And for me, it didn't mean anything. And 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 then when everything came about, like the pandemic, and then seeing all these you, these people that I love, you know, not be here anymore because of COVID, it was tough. And I was putting a lot of things in perspective. And and I realized that the material stuff didn't matter anymore. All this that we have back here, the mask doesn't matter anymore. This doesn't matter. What matters is what's in the heart and being healthy. And I'm healthy. My kids are healthy. The people that I love are healthy. And, and that's the main thing for me right now. I just go focusing on, on, on what's going to be in the future in, in, in wrestling. You know, a lot of things are opening up now. And, and a lot of promoters are starting to call. And I just, I just have to be patient, you know, for that opportunity. Work hard like I did before, before I got the opportunity to do my trial with the company. It took me 10 years, but I did it. You know, I ended up, you know, working for the biggest company for 10 years also. So um, I'm very happy about that. And, and that's the main thing right now, trying to keep myself in, 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 uh, in that mood of like training and keep myself motivated. And right now I'm, I'm writing a couple books. So I'm excited about that also. <laughs> that's great. Well, congratulations. Do you still get any sort of residual checks from WWE, video games, DVDs, anything like that? I got one this past month. I was like, what? I didn't know. I didn't know. Like, like you, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's a blessing, you know, because obviously, uh, you know, I've been tracing kind of for for seven years, and 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 why not? I think we uh we are very underpaid, to be honest, as performers in, in what we do, and and if I can get a little bit, then then why not? You know. Yeah, growing up in El Paso, living in El Paso now, how much did Eddie Guerrero influence you? Well, I think a lot, you know, a lot for a lot of us still does still yeah. to this day. People talk to talk talk about him here in El Paso, wherever, wherever you go, and people that that mention wrestling always mention his name. So I remember me as imagine this kid. I was eight years old. He was eighteen years old when he debuted in Ciudad Juarez, and I remember that we used to, there was a in in, in Josué Neri Santos in Ciudad Juarez. The they, they has like a second level, and when you were in the second level, you could sit down and you could see like in these little areas where they had locker rooms, and Eddie would stand would come outside and watch the match and he would stand outside like this and we would just be looking and trying to say hi to him and he would be waving to us and things like that. So I had a lot of fun memories of when, when he was this uh, young kid in Chihuahua Fighters trying to make it in the business. And then all of a sudden, he, you know, he left to Japan, he left to ECW, he left to WCW, and then he became this amazing star in WWE. And and for us, it was it was an honor to be able to you know say that he was from, from El Paso, Ciudad Juarez, because I used to watch him as a little kid. Mm-hmm. Now he's making it in the big time. And before he passed away, um, I remember Hector Rincón, one of his best friends from high school, I told him, hey, you think you can give Eddie a video of me where I can do, you know, so, so maybe he can, you know, help me out to see if I can get a trial with the company. Or, well, I, I don't know how it works, you know. Nowadays, kids have social media. That's a great thing. Back in the day, they didn't have social media. So Hector told me, yeah, get it together and I'll give it to him. So I was trying to get it together. And then unfortunately, you know, a few ma- months after that, he passed away. So so I never got an opportunity to really talk to him or meet him in person. We never had a conversation. But the influences, the influence that he left to, for a lot of us are still here. You know, you can see it. And I have a, I'm going to show you something that's really cool. Please. Yeah. Oh, this is exciting. This mask, it's, it's, I don't know. If, I don't know if you know that, that Eddie was a yeah. black tiger in Japan. Yeah. This, this wow. was an actual mask that Eddie wore in Japan. That's his like mask. Tiger. That's his mask. That's your mask. Yeah. Oh, I got wow. it to, to, uh, to a friend of mine that uh, worked with him for a lot of years and he gave it to me as a present. He was like, hey, I want you to have it because I know you, you know, you, 
you love Eddie and you love what he has done in his career. So I have a lot of, a lot of, a few things of Eddie that, that I really, you know, hold, hold dear to my heart. Wow. Because, you know, to this day, he still influences a lot of, a lot of the people here in, in, in La Frontera. To this day, they still talk about him. They want to do murals about him still. They want to do a lot of things, you know, to, to keep him alive. And, and it's, it's awesome to be able to, you know, realize that, that, you know, he was from here. He went to Jefferson High School. He wrestled at Jose Manuel Santos. I, I, I used to, you know, wait outside in the, in the auditorium in Juarez, and I used to wait for the wrestlers to get in. And I would ask them, hey, can I carry your back? So I would carry their backs into, into the locker room and then, get, and then go out and watch the matches. That's that, you know, because I, I was in love with wrestling and I got to, you know, meet a lot of the great stars. And, and I know a lot of those people. And especially nowadays, like when I talk to a lot of the kids, they uh, obviously admire the career that Eddie had. And, and for us, it's, it's an honor to be able to say that he's from, from El Paso, Ciudad Juarez. You know, a lot of masked wrestlers will obviously think about Rey Mysterio. So there's obviously a lot of comparisons between you and Rey. Mm -hmm. what, what does Rey mean to you and, and to your career? Ray, Ray has also a lot of influence in a lot of us, and uh, especially me, especially in the beginning of my career. Like if, if I'll, I'll probably, I have to find some pictures, but I remember that I used to watch a lot of the magazines where, where uh, Ray used to come out and his outfit he used to have like these arrows in his, in his uh, leggings. And I remember that I used to do something similar to that. And, and then he was the first one that actually like started changing the colors of the mask and the trends and all that stuff. So that's where I got the idea of me like doing different outfits. When uh, I remember Halloween Havoc with him and, and, and um, Eddie Guerrero, that was an amazing match. Yeah. The outfit that Ray had, the purple one, I did something similar, but in red. When I, when I wrestled Nicho for the title, for the WWE World title in Ciudad Juarez. So it was, it, it was in honor of... of uh, of a Rey Mysterio. So he had a lot of influence in, in a lot of us and still to this day. And then when I got to meet him for the first time in person, man, he was, he's the nicest guy that you could ever meet in your life. That guy doesn't have a, uh, nothing bad about him in his, in his body and his bone, not even in his soul, nothing. He's just a, an amazing person. You know, when, uh, when my son turned eight years old, I remember I told him, Hey, we're going to go to California. I was like, what do you want to go? Legoland, this and that. He's like, no, that, Take me to Remy Stadium's house. That's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, how do you know he lives in California? I was like, oh, because I saw the video. Remember they had like a little documentary out of his home and things like yeah. that. Yeah. And I was like, man, I was in shock. I was like, all right. So then when I went to California, I called Ray. He's like, hey, man, you think? Uh, he's like, yeah, come on over. So he sent me his address. We went over to his house uh, and he just treated my son like royalty, man. He gave him a tour wow. of his house. He gave him like action figures. He gave him a uh, original mask sign and everything. And so, so he's just a, he's a great person, man. And, 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 and I think a lot of guys look up to him in, in that sense. Not maybe, you know, sometimes that when you, uh, when you have this, when you, get, when you want to know somebody that it's or idol, sometimes you get very, uh, I guess you get the opposite of what you thought that person was, or maybe you get very, um, it happened to me with one wrestler that I thought he was an amazing guy, and then I met him, and he was a jerk, and, and that was it. I was like, man, and then with Ray, with Ray, no, you tend to love him more once yeah. you get to know him, you know, because he's just a great person. <laughs> you know, it's obviously been a, a tough year for a lot of people, and I'm really mm -hmm. curious to know, what have you learned about yourself over this last year dealing with COVID? Well, the first thing is that I learned is that... uh I can survive outside WWE, that there's life after that for a lot of the boys, because I think they're afraid of, of actually, you know, even if they are happy in the company, they are afraid of actually telling how they feel or what they want to do, because they think there's nothing else after that. There is. Yeah. There's life after that. And I really, I, I, and, uh, I think what I've learned is that I, I've been, uh, that I love my, that I, I love my kids more than anything in the world, that I've been able to, you know, uh, get to know them. And I never thought that I would that this tough guy tattooed up would be combing his daughter in the morning, putting her <laughs> in a little ponytail. <laughs> and I learned that I could do a lot of things that, that I wasn't used to doing it. And then uh and that I just want to continue living. I just want to continue doing positive things in life with the people and motivating people and letting them know that no matter what happens in your life, God has a plan and, and we all have something that we can, you know, love and we can try to accomplish and, and continue working for that goal, no matter what the situation, no matter, you know, how hard we sometimes we think that, that, that they're not going to get out. We will, we will. And, and, and I can tell you that because I've, I've lived that also, I think I've been a little more, um, 
let my feelings more out there than before. I was very close minded in that sense that I'm like holding everything back and not saying how I felt or not saying, you know, what really goes on. And, and for me, I think I've uh, let go of that, that taboo of like when you grow up, oh, you got to be tough. You can't cry because you're a man and all those little things, you know. And for me, I've learned that, you know, letting all that emotion out, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help. It's only going to make you better. It's not, it's not going to, it's not going to make me less of a man because I say that I cry or because I say that I miss, you know, my kids or this and that. At the end of the day, every time I see my kids, I always tell them, I love you. I love them. I love them every time, every time. And, and I think for me, I've learned that, um, I'm more sentimental than I thought that I was. Mm. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> you know, in, in talking about life after WWE, would you want to go to AEW? I'm a, I'm I want to go wherever they want me, to be honest. That that that's the main thing for me. For me, it's if you really want me, if you really want me to be part of your company, if you really want me to be part of what you're doing, I'm here for that. You know, I'm all in. All in. I've always been like that. I'm a person that does things, either does them or doesn't do them. I cannot do things have waste. Yeah. And I think if, if AW wants me, if they want to call, we, they, we can definitely, you know, talk. I'm, uh, I'm not, you know, against anything, but I, I do just want to, you know, re- reaffirm that I want to be a place where, where they really want me, want to give me an opportunity to succeed and and do the things that I want to do. Just let me wrestle. That's all I want to do. Just yeah. pure wrestle, man just let, let me wrestle everybody let's <laughs> hope the world can get back to normal where we can watch you wrestle all the time too yeah yeah i'm, I'm excited for that you know things are starting to open up a little bit i already got my uh vaccine i got vaccinated already and you know trying to be responsible in every sense of, of, of that i can be especially with this pandemic and and i just want to be able to you know continue my career and continue working continue wrestling no politics politics aside let me just work with everybody let me wrestle (laughs) yeah this has been so insightful finding out about the man behind the mask thank you so much i just have one final question for you and every interview talking about oh no he's gone no no i'm here my man he's back i end every interview talking about gratitude because gratitude is such an important thing in my life and i say that if you can be grateful you'll live a great life so i'm curious what are three things that you're grateful for in your life right now my kids, my health, and my parents. There we go. Because if, if, the way you treat your parents is the way, you know, it reflects who you are as a person. And that's very true. No matter where you go, you know, it's uh, in my life, you know, throughout my life, uh, no matter what has happened, no matter what my, my parents, they have always been people that have supported me throughout my life, throughout my career. My kids are starting to understand a lot of things in my life now of what I've done in my career, you know, and, and I think that's, that's the main thing for me being able to keep those people that I, that I love close to me and to understand sometimes the decisions that I, that I make are tough, but it's for, for the best in, in my life. Yeah. Those are three great things. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to seeing you back in the ring soon. Hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks again for finally, you know, getting together and talking and anytime you want to talk, let's, let's get together and, and chat a little more. We'll do this one in person next time. Orally. You got it, brother. Thank you so much. Stay safe.